I've always been, that's my problem. Like I've been like, had this thing for like married men to where there is nothing that would have to hold me back from that. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Santagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us your story and we'll get back to you. Yeah, just a reminder for everyone, if you're watching this on YouTube, we have a ton of other episodes, older episodes, before we even started uploading to YouTube. So you can check out whatever podcast platform you use, Apple, Spotify, uh, and just search other people's lives and you will see, honestly, years of (laughs) older episodes uh, before we did video. So if you want to binge that, and uh, same for everyone just listening on audio, if you want to actually see us do these episodes, you can head over to uh, YouTube and just search other people's lives. But today we are speaking to a woman who really caught our attention with her email uh, because the subject line just read the other woman. And we didn't get many details in the email, uh, but what we kind of extracted from it is that she does not feel bad for being the other woman. And that's uh, super interesting. So we're kind of curious to hear her story, why she feels that way. Uh, But we've got the guests on the line and thanks so much for being on today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I I feel like for most episodes, we get a little more background or we understand some of the story. We're going into this like really only understanding that, as you put it in your email, you think as a woman, you'd feel bad for being the other woman. But honestly, fuck that bitch and that you don't feel bad. So (laughs) like I said in the beginning, that caught our attention. But I guess just to kind of start, um, just at the beginning to kind of understand the context before we get into, I guess, how you sort of became the other woman in this situation and why you don't feel bad. What is the dynamic here? Um, you know, who are, who are the people involved in the story and how did you get involved with them? So um, it is a married couple. Um, and I met the man because our daughters are on the same softball team. So it went from like we were hanging out with the kids and for some reason the mom would never want to come around when we hung out with the kids and it ended up just being us. And then, you know, getting close from that point of view to just like, hey, you know, I don't want, you know, you kind of look cute from this angle. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so oh, oh, this is a hot start already. So you have, you have a daughter, you said? Yes. yes. And this man has a daughter and is married. Are you married? No. Okay, are you with? I was engaged during this time, but I am not no longer. That's where this like turn of events happened. Okay, so you're engaged at the time. You meet a married man at softball. His wife isn't around. Your fiance isn't around, and you're like, "This guy's cute." Okay, continue. Yeah. So it went from just like, um, after we were just hanging out with the kids or whatever. I don't know. I think I just like made a pass one night. Like I was just like, you know what's up like <laughs> i i'm like a very blunt person i guess and that's what like gets the guy's attention because i'll just go for it and i just told him i was like we should definitely sleep together it was just that it wasn't even like i want to hang out with you or whatever alone or nothing i don't want that i just we should sleep together so, are you like unhappy in your own engagement at the time and that and that's why this happened it wasn't that i was unhappy it's just there's something about the excitement, I guess. Like I've always been, that's my problem. Like I've been like, had this thing for like married men to where there is nothing that would have to hold me back from that. Like, I don't need to worry about, Oh, we're going to fall in love or, Oh, we're going to be together. Like, no, we can just do this and that's it. Like we're good. I don't need nothing else from that. I don't need no other strings attached. So whatever I'm not getting, I can get there, you know? So you're saying you, you have like an attraction to married men because you know that it won't progress into anything serious. Yes. Like, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. I'm not going to get too involved to where it's going to be me getting hurt. I guess for the way of protecting myself, which is weird. Okay. Oh, so you're you're worried about, like, if the person was single, then you might, then you might get hurt? Yes. But you don't feel bad for the wife who could potentially get really hurt? No, the reason, but the reason I don't feel bad in this situation, and so I've had, like, a previous a similar thing but the reason i don't feel bad is because 
I became friends with this man to know he vents to me about a bunch of issues. And he's told me that like they've been together, I want to say honestly, 13 years. And they the the last two years, they haven't even had sex. Like she wouldn't even touch him. And she all of a sudden became all churchy to where she's like, believe in God and God this and let's do this and trying to change him to being that person, which he's not. And it just she just wouldn't they weren't physical. That's why he was looking for it and I guess went for it. And I'm I don't feel bad because it's like you're you're doing that to yourself. You're making your man seem like not wanted or needed in a sexual sense, and that's what kind of everybody needs, I think. Let alone a married person. I don't know. So when you approached him with this, just very bluntly saying at basically your daughter's softball game or practice, uh, and say we should sleep together, what was his initial response? Um, he was very surprised. He was like, this doesn't happen often where someone's just like, Hey, let's just have sex. And uh, like his eyes widened and everything. And he kind of like laughed, like thought it was joking. And I was like, no, I'm serious. Like, you know, kids would be gone at this time. Why are you just, or it, it wasn't, no, it was like in the morning. It was like, I think seven in the morning. I was like, why don't you, well, we were at practice third evening when this conversation happened. So at like seven at night, we we're having this conversation and I was like, I'm being dead serious. Seven in the morning, we both go to work. So come here before and let's just, you know, see how it is, test the waters, and then go from there. We can probably just continue doing just the something together kind of thing. That's an early start for an affair. No, so no, Six a.m.? Hey, <laughs> is the sun even up? <laughs> no, it was dark. It was 5 a.m., guys. Like, I kind of had to prepare for this because I've never, never in my life, not even like a one-night stand thing, never no five in the fucking morning. This is like... I had to like set an alarm to like, let me brush my teeth. Let me wake up, like throw some water on my face. I have never, but you know, it was worth it though. So I mean, you know, <laughs> wait, so, the night, so like the night before you just, you told him that you guys should sleep together. And the next morning at 5 AM he was there. Yeah. He, yeah. He came the next day. Um, I gave him my house keys and cause I wasn't going to fucking, I barely wanted to wake up. So I was like, here, you know, like you should, here's the keys this is for this door this is for this door i'm not gonna open the door for you like i'm sorry but um and then uh yeah he came the next day he thought i was joking even when i gave the keys like oh you're just fucking with me blah blah and i'm like all right well i guess we'll just have to see like how serious i am <laughs> and then he did and he did and this wow. was the first time so wait hold on i'm sorry the, the you went you were at like a practice or something and you gave yeah. this man your house keys yeah and this was the first time they were like, we should sleep together. Here's my house keys. Come meet me at 5 a.m. Yeah, there's no stop behind that. Do you see how that's, that's me? You know, when you say it, it's not bad. I'm just no, I'm just trying to get the story <laughs> no, correct yes, here. Yes, yes, that's um, right. And you said you were engaged at this time, right? Mm-hmm. So where was he? He was out of town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel like... I'm not even making a joke about the time and how early it is, but that's like, I feel like you hear so many stories and it was, there's like drinks involved or it's late and you know, people make mistakes, but this is like, you have all the time in the world to think about it. You have to get out of bed like earlier than you wanted to get out of bed to go get into another bed. But that's like, did it like, did you ever hesitate or did he that you know of where he was like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. He, no, he thought like more so I was kidding, I guess. And I just, I like, if you want something, you go for it, man. How do you know if you're going to, you're going to make the shot if you don't shoot it. <laughs> you're a very direct communicator. That's for sure. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you know at that time that you were going to break off your engagement? No. Uh, mm -hmm. So, Okay. So you were like in, in this, uh, so like it was kind of a, it sounds like a spur of the moment thing. Like, well, my fiance is out of town. I could have sex yeah. with this dude and then just go mm -hmm. back to my relationship, I guess. Yeah. It was like, uh, I wasn't sure if I was unhappy kind of thing in general. Like I, and I wasn't, it's not that I'm not, I wasn't happy. It's just, you know, it was just one of those things, I guess. Like I'm not like, okay. Oh, it sounds like it, but I'm not a homewrecker. I don't go planning to ruin someone's family and life. And I didn't plan on leaving where I was at, but just, oh. Okay. And did you kind of, were you thinking about like the consequences of if you got caught or what, like what was it? Was just the, the urge to sleep with this guy in particular? It just kind of trumped everything It else? was just, I think it was because, so he's not my type at all 
So I don't know what it was that attracted me to something just attracted me to him. So that's why I was like, well, I'm just going to go try it. And it's like, I just wanted to see. And then after it's like, oh, wow. Like I really like this. It was worth it. And it's like, I'm not even mad. And I didn't feel bad. That was the thing. Like, so I don't know if that's how you tell you're unhappy if you don't feel bad, but like in my situation, I didn't feel bad. Not theirs. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even thinking of theirs. What, right. Was your um, daughter, is is that a child that you had with your fiance? No. Oh, okay. I had her very young. <laughs> so after you guys uh, slept together this time, did you have a discussion afterwards? Did you guys sleep together again? Um, no, right away he left and went to work. <laughs> and I went back to sleep. <laughs> and then we ended up seeing each other at practice. And then that's when the girls would want to hang out more. And so it went from we would just hang out at like the park or something to we're hanging out at my house. Like then it became like a habit, like almost damn near every day we would all be hanging out. And it was like weird because it was like we were a family. I'm like, and I'd ask questions like, hey, where's her mom at? Like, why isn't she hanging out with us? Or why doesn't she want to come hang out? Like, I would even like before anything, because we only did that once. And then we would just hang out and be friends. It was kind of like we didn't acknowledge it or talk about it. It was just like, okay, cool, whatever. We just went on about our day. And then I would say like a couple months went by and then it just kind of like came back to where we're like, well, hey, like, are we going to do this? Like, is this going to be because then it would start to be like we'd like say flirty things or something or like a little like joking around like that, like where you're hitting each other like high schoolers or little middle schoolers where you're flirting like that. It went to that like then it's like, you know, are we going to do this? Like, is, like, that's when it became like and this was a couple months later, like we're just like, well, all right, like she's not around then that's when he was telling me too how they weren't sleeping together and all this and that whatever and i'm like well i don't mind i'm here and i'm okay with it and i wasn't even really getting doing it either like my me and my person weren't really sleeping together either so i'm like well i mean if it's here why not you got it so, so it would be sorry it would be you you two and and both of your daughters yes like kind of hanging out together and I mean, I'm just curious, like with, with, I guess your mentality around this and how you approach it, but like the presence of your kids and like his kid, uh, like was his kid with his wife? I assume. No, that's not even his kid. No, this is his stepkid. This is her kid. Oh, uh, okay. But that like the presence of even like hanging out with the kids, like didn't make you think like, oh, maybe I shouldn't like, or maybe what we're doing like could affect, you know, his marriage or this kid or anything. No, it didn't. Because... It seemed almost as if she was just absent. Like she didn't, she didn't want to be there. I've even offered, like, hey, I'll hang out with her. We'll have a girl's day. I want to get to know the person. Like, because then maybe I'll feel bad or something. You know, like then I would, or maybe I wouldn't have gone into this with any type of thought if I knew her. But she, like, she wouldn't even go to the games or practices either. It would just be just us all the time anyway. So it's like, all right, well, I mean, it's kind of like you're just by yourself. And then I did. I ended. I did meet her though. And then I think after meeting her, it made me feel even more like, all right, yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna do what I want to do. Like, why what do you, you mean didn't... by that? Yeah. Well, so um, my daughter wanted, or their daughter wanted to hang out with mine, and instead of being at our house, they want. She wanted her to go there. And my daughter, I don't usually I don't let her go anywhere anyway. So we're really like at home. We're, we're always together at the hip. So it's always just us. Her dad's not really even in her life. So it's just me and her. So I was like, all right, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. Like, you can go ahead. So I went to go drop her off. But regardless, I always make sure, like, I look nice when I go out. Even if it's to the grocery store. But I don't mean, like, full face makeup. I just, you know, I look nice. I'm not, like, in sweats and messy hair. I, like, you know, kind of look put together. So, but it wasn't, like, my top tier best. I just looked nice. And I went to go drop her off and I was like, um, okay, well, I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to meet her mom finally, like, you know, whatever. And she knew we would hang out, like us and the kids, whatever. She just never knew how I looked, I guess, or how young I was. Like, we're all the same age. I think she just thinks I was older or something. I don't know. So then um, I get out of the car. I walk up to the house. I was like, oh, hi, you know, I'm so-and-so. And, you know, uh, nice to finally meet you. And then she just, like, it looked like her face, like, she, like, she did drop, like, this is her mom. This is the other one. This is her. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, but she acted like I see it in her face that she kind of was like taken back. And then um right away I'm just like, okay, like, you know, so being nice. I was being okay, respectable. And then dropped off my daughter. I was like, I'll be back at this time. Just, you know, call me if she wants me to come get her earlier. As soon as I left, 
he said that she was like, you didn't tell me how beautiful she was. You didn't tell me that's how or anything about her. I, I don't want you ever hanging out with her. That's ridiculous. And she's like, and then she's going back. I'm like, they have, you know, those like ring cameras. She was mm. going back and rewinding it to see our, if we made weird contact, eye contact or something, or if we shifted or looked weird. So she was studying us, like going back like a fucking crazy person. And then I'm like, okay, like, you're a little bit too much. Like for someone who didn't care, now you care just because how I look. Like had you seen me before, then you know it would have been different. You chose to stay back and do I don't know whatever it is you were doing, but you were never around for months. And then all of a sudden, like, so then she was just like being extra. Like I mean, you can't go to the house anymore. Then she and it was like to the point where she's like, the girls can't even hang out. And I'm like, what? What do they have to do with anything? Like, well, calm down. <laughs> this is a bit too much. But. <laughs> So she was clearly suspicious. Yeah, yeah. Did she ever confront you? Oh, uh, yes, she did. <laughs> but this is like, a, so fast forward a little more time, um, a few more months, because me, this has been going on, I'd say, for a good year. Um, so a little bit more into it, I get a call from her. Oh, so I, went, I dropped food off to him at work. One day I was getting out of work. He was still at work. He's like, hey, can you bring me some food? I'm like, yeah, sure. I was like, I'll even eat with you because I'm, I'm not doing anything anyways. It was nothing. I mean, well, granted, the time that it was when we were technically messing around. But it was just measly me dropping food off. <laughs> um, I posted something, I think, on Snapchat. <clears throat> and I didn't know that I was friends with one of her friends or something. Or we, we had a mutual friend or something. I don't know. And they seen it. They screenshot it. And they sent it to her. And I, all I did was take a picture of him eating and i said like all you got to do is feed the gremlin and then or like don't feed the gremlin or something i don't know i said something like that and then she's so she calls me and mind you i'm at my house with my best friend my brother my sister my daughter and we're all watching a movie laughing whatever and i seen some random number call so i pick up and i'm already laughing because whatever the movie was and then she's like uh like are you fucking serious and i'm like hello and then she was like and like she's like, yeah, you think uh she's like, is this so and so? I was like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> she's like, Do you know who this is? I'm like, uh no, <laughs> who is this? And then she said her name, and I'm like, oh hey, well, what's up? And then she's like, because I can like keep like a poker face of where like, hey, look, if we say we're low key chill, okay, cool, I'm gonna be low key chill. I know how to hold my water. <laughs> so <laughs> she just like um, what the what the fuck do you think you're doing? You know this is a married man, da da da. I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. And I was like, that's my friend. She's like, well, why are you bringing him food? If that if this is my husband, you shouldn't be doing that. I'm like, okay, well then if it's your husband, why don't you go send him with food then? Why don't you go feed him then? So nobody else has to. Like you're, <laughs> don't get mad at me because you're not doing your job then. Like all I was doing was bringing food. Didn't think it was a big deal. My fucking bad. And then she just tried yelling and yelling. I'm like, look, if you want to come, you're not going to talk to me like I'm a child. You want to come to my house, you can come to my house. We can talk about it all day. But you're not about to yell at me like a kid. So you have a great day. Goodbye. And, I'm like, Bye. and that was the only time that you guys really spoke about this. That me and her, yes, except for she texted me a couple days ago. Oh. But yeah. This is like still ongoing. What'd she say? Well, I mean, if you want to get like to the updated right now. Um, Should we get her on the phone? Me and him oh, okay, are together great. now. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, he separated from her and me and him were together. Oh, so when did that happen? This happened this past week, actually. Um, so there's been like a bunch of shit in the in-betweens, like where he showed up to, like, cause we, so we have each other's location and you know, that's kind of like... I feel like that's, that's a bit much sometimes, but I don't be popping up nowhere because I don't have to, and I barely check it. But he's, he does, because he, he's now the one like, oh, well, you could just you do whatever you want whenever you want, so I'm going to like, so that's why I guess he pops up, because he's insecure now. <laughs> because I'm just... Because you might I'm be out there mean. talking to other married men, he thinks. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a free, happy person. I don't know. <laughs> well, so let me ask you, like, I mean, that's great. I didn't expect that you would have ended up with him. So you're no longer with your fiance. He left this woman and you guys are together. Yes. And let if, me tell you, there's not a lot of happy people, but I mean, I say, fuck it. I'm happy. You're happy. What does it matter? What if, uh, what if you met a new hot married guy that, that walked into your life? Fuck it, I, don't, I guess we'll cross that path when we get there. But right now I'm good. I'm happy. <laughs> okay. I just feel like we're like more of the more, we got more, we're like the same person, I feel like, honestly. Like, 
that's why I feel like we get along more than they do. But I am, I don't know. <laughs> so you guys just decided last week that you guys are going to be together. <laughs> um. Yeah. So funny thing, uh, they were going. They were going on a date. I didn't know they were going on a date because he was texting me saying he was going to go out with his best friend and I had the location. So I seen he wasn't at home. So I was like, all right, bet I can call him. So I went to call to like, and I'm, I was having some drinks at the time too. So I'm feeling a little bubbly, like, <laughs> and I'm in a great mood. So I like calling the laugh forever. And then he's like, Hey, what's up? And I was like, uh, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going, he's like, I'm, I'm going to the movies or something. And then all I hear is her in the background. I was like, Oh yeah. With who your best friend. Cause his best friend doesn't really like me. Like he likes to talk shit because he thinks I'm going to break his heart, but whatever. So, um, when I said that I heard her in the background, she's like, why the fuck is she calling you? I'm like, Oh no, that's, this isn't what I thought. And then I hung up. Cause I'm like, I don't feel like arguing right now. I'm not, I'm drinking. I'm in a great mood. <laughs> and then, um, bit later uh like they're they're blowing my phone up they're texting everything and i'm like dude you fucking said you're gonna go out with your friend you didn't say you were going out with her i wouldn't have called you so it turned into this big ass thing where she's like i didn't know you were still talking to her because he claimed he wasn't talking to me no more he told her flat out and i mean that you want to lie that's on you i i ain't saying that i mean that's your business you don't lie <laughs> but um and then she when she said my name again she's always been asking about me though she this girl literally she he sent me screenshots because I blocked him and her from all my social media. Literally the next day, seven in the fucking morning, she's texting. Why does she block me for? Did she block you? Go check it. Or as soon as I made an Instagram, because I made I just made an Instagram not too long ago. Ashley has an Instagram now. Like what? Why? Why are you up this early? And why? Why is the first thing you think to do is hey, let me go see what she's doing. What that? Anyway, well, I'm just telling you, she's a little more obsessed with me than him. But <laughs> so. I think, yeah, so you've been very honest with us, which we appreciate. Um, but I think we kind of just have to address then, like, what, well, I guess one question I have actually, because I feel like you don't get to speak to a lot of people who are going to be as open about this as you're being. And like, now you're, <laughs> now you're with someone where this person cheated to be with you, you cheated to be with him. Like, I guess you kind of are kind of alluded to it, but like, do you trust that person? Like when you meet, both meet that way because you've been, I guess, unfaithful to then be together. Like, do you not trust that that person's going to be faithful with you? Um, no, I trusted only because that I can see the way this dude looks and talks to me. He doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust me for sure. Do you, do you trust you? Right now, yeah, I'm happy. I'm in love. I'm I'm okay. good. Like I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but he know like so that's the thing. Like he's uh, he always says, "Be honest with me." And I'm like, "Look, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, but you're not gonna like it." Like that's the thing. People say be honest, but they can't handle when someone's honest. So then you're forcing someone to lie or hide for you. Like right now, and I even told him, I was like, "Look, there's times where either I'm really in love and you're not." Or you're really in love and I'm not like it's like a it's like a level thing. It's never the same where we're both that happy together. It's always one or the other. And <laughs> when mine is low and I'm not in like that level, that's when I'm like, okay, now I get distracted easy. Now who's over there next door? Or who's walking down the street? Like then but so he tries to I think keep up with the I think that's I don't know. I'm not sure why he's giving a chance. I mean he says because he's happy and in love and I'm the perfect for him, but I think it's more so he doesn't want to lose that excitement. I tell him he's bored. I'm like, dude, you're bored. That's why you're here. You're bored. Like, I can't. I I know that I have strong feelings, and I can say that I love you because of the shit we've been through. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have stood. You're not even my type. I wouldn't have stood. But something about you, I guess. So well, you think I, that I do, but he doesn't. <laughs> you you think that you're gonna you guys will be together for for like forever or like a long time or you're just kind of playing it day by day? Um, I think. We're planning to, but I think for, in reality, we're taking it day by day. He wants to have a baby. <laughs> and I think, honestly, part of me is because I like I always have said I wanted one more child, but I haven't in so long. My child's already in her teens. And I it was like, well, that's like starting over. But I would want one more. And then like it and that, that OK, so that part I almost feel bad for because I guess she's always wanted one. And he's always said no or didn't want one with her. 
But then, yeah, I'm like, well, then, I was like, do you want one with me? He's like, yeah. He's like, I think you're a great mom. And you're, like, and I'm like, well, that kind of makes me feel like shit a little. But, again, I mean, that's, it's a little bit. Um, so what does your daughters think? Like, are, are they like, oh, you guys are together now? Or do they not know? <clears throat> um, mine knows. And she's, I've always been honest with her, though. I have always been honest with her. Uh, some people even say, like, dude, you're too honest with your kid. Like, your kid should know this shit. And I'm like, well, I would never want to lie to my kid. I've never, my parents have never been in my life. So I don't know what it's like to be a parent. I had her teach myself this shit. So with her, it's like, I always want to be honest so that she feels comfortable to where she doesn't feel like she has to lie. Like, I tell her everything. So she knows all about this. And I had, like, at first, like, I want to say the first maybe five months, I didn't say nothing to her. Because I didn't want her to think it's okay to be with a married man type shit. You know, like, but come on, you can't teach your kids that. So <clears throat> I had to, like, figure out a way to describe it to her and talk to her about it. But now she knows everything. Like, when I first said it, I was just like, oh, you know, he's unhappy and, like, blah, blah, blah. Do you feel like she, like, judges you for it or might or, or not? She does? Yeah. She's, she, so, no, she's, she's such a team mom. She's all about mom. Like, she's not daddy's little girl. She's mommy's little girl. Like, she doesn't even, she doesn't, she worries for me and doesn't want my feelings to get hurt. Like, she's like, she, for a long time, she didn't like him. She just now, like, started liking him because he's been at her house, like, every day for, like, about a week. Um, <clears throat> but she's like, uh, she even said, like, you know, I really thought I wasn't going to like him being here, but I do, and I'm happy you're happy, mom. Like, I just really hope it works for you. Because, you know, we do have kind hearts, but she's a sweetheart. She's, she's, I'm surprised she's nice and fun. <laughs> How old is she? She's 13. 13? Yeah. That's a lot okay. for 13, I feel like, to be this honest about she these is, types of yeah, things. She, yeah. I, I, that, I, that's why I say, like, I don't know, I don't really know boundaries when it comes to my, my child. I want to, I feel like I want to be honest with her. Everything. You know, it doesn't, it just seems like we have more of a, such a friendship relationship sometimes, and I want, her to feel okay to talk to me about things so okay so i guess like clearly there's an understanding that telling this story will probably upset a lot of people obviously these are strangers people who don't know you but just kind of hearing this level of honesty and it seems like you have sort of zero regrets and there's probably you know why wouldn't there be people out there thinking like oh this if this is a type of woman yeah that's out there that like is is this person going to approach, you know, my husband or my boyfriend or like, who knows? Uh, what do you like, what do you say to those people who are like, well, this is kind of not the right thing to do. Um, I mean, people know right from wrong. They're going to, they live life how they live it. I live life like it could be my last. Why should I, why should I have to settle for what's right and wrong when it should just be what I want to do? It's, it's my life. I mean, he didn't have to continue. He didn't have to join me. And if I want something, I'm going to go for it, no matter what it is, if it's taken or not. And I'm going to try. And clearly, if I majority of times I get what I want, I'm not trying to be like one of those like two on horn things, but I do because I go for it. And I mean, people are going to get mad. But then again, they're, maybe they haven't been on this side. Maybe they haven't seen it from my side. Like they're just in their little world of, oh, people belong together and that's that. Like in the story, like, oh, people are unhappy. And I'm not dating them. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, you don't think his family's mad? You don't think I don't give a shit with my family? Honestly, I don't, like I'm. My family is my family. We have our like whatever weird bond we have. But I'm not dating them. I'm not dating his family. I'm not dating his friends. I am dating him. So at the end of the day, if he's happy, that's all that matters to me. I don't give a shit who wants to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how his daughter feels about everything? She's. So I do, um, the first time that we had that altercation where she called, where the woman called me, um, she then, right then and there said he had to choose between me and her. And he flat out said he chooses me and he was going to leave her to be with me. And, um, so she literally went and it was, it was sad. That was sad because she went up to her kid and I felt like that was a wrong move to make. And she like, I guess the kid was in the room crying because they were yelling. And then she went up to her like, oh, well, um, you need to know he's leaving us for her and, and he's not happy here and da, da, da. Like that was wrong. The way she went about that because she was hurt was wrong. And that made me feel bad. And our kids haven't talked since then because 
<clears throat> she kind of has like a watch on her to where she'll like, she would try to get information from her kids about my household and me when they just wanted to talk. Like they would, they would sneak to talk like on Facebook, not sneak by me, but sneak to her because they would be on FaceTime playing video games or something. And she'd be like, Oh, well, where's who's all there? Da, da, da. Like it's dude, let them be kids. Like, I'm sorry for, I feel more bad for the daughter than I do for her. If anything, I do feel bad about that. I have a question. Why? I mean, we're, we're thankful for you coming on and just giving this brutally honest, you know, view of everything, but like why, why I, I always want to know this with certain guests, like why reach out to us and like, why do you think it's important to kind of get this story out there and, you know, share your experience and point of view? Well, cause I just feel like there's a lot of people that are unsure what to do. Like, I feel like if you're in that situation, go for it, try it. Because you don't know what the outcome is. Look at mine. I didn't think it was going to go from me being the other woman to now she's the other woman. Like it's not even, or she's not even the woman in the sense, like just try because you never know what you're going to do and don't, don't care too much or think too much about it. Cause a lot of people nowadays, they just, all they do is think, 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 overthink. And then think about that thinking, like just relax, be happy. You deserve to be happy. Don't feel scared. Don't feel bad when people are calling you names, because people can call me anything in the book, call me whatever you want, but come here and let's handle it. Then. <laughs> like come say it to me then, and then it will be different. Like, I don't care. You can say whatever you want about me. So it's just an attitude of like, if you want something, just, go get it and don't even really like don't overthink it and don't what consider what like even the consequences could be or are like are the consequences irrelevant to you it's just I think it depends okay. like i feel like if you i'm sorry <laughs> no, i just feel like if you um the consequences of course there's always going to be something like if you think it's worth it go for it and i did all right. Well. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that's, you know, it, it is interesting to hear this uh, point of view that I can honestly say I've never heard before in my entire life. But yeah. I guess that's the, the beauty of the show is, uh, you know, that's why we have the show to give people a platform to kind of talk about their experience. Um, yeah. We Again, I mean, as Greg was saying, we do appreciate you coming on and, and being super honest with us. I mean, we can, that definitely shines through that you're being completely honest with us. Yeah, <laughs> I'll hit you guys up in like six months. Let you know if, if we have a kid or not, or if we're like, or if I got somebody else. No, just <laughs> keep us posted. We'll we'll check the email. But I guess that's my very last question before we wrap up. Like, are you worried? Like, I know you say you're happy, you're in love now, but you also say that you're easily distracted. And even though that was a joke you just made, there's definitely some seriousness to it. Of like are you afraid that this could be an endless cycle for you of like, I'm going to get bored. I'm going to find someone else. And then you just kind of keep like leaving, I guess this like path of, I don't want to say like destruction. That sounds like really intense, but you know, like, no, 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 no. I do. I, I do. I think that's perfect. That was perfect words. Go ahead. <laughs> like, does that, does that worry you or bother you? Or like, will you just keep the mentality of like, as long as you're happy in that moment, like you will just keep doing what you want to do and getting what you want. So, um, I've always been like on that self-destructive where if something's going good, I always have to have a backup. That's always been my mentality because I feel like nothing ever lasts. I would love for it to be that fairy tale thing or whatever to believe in it. Like I believe that there is a soulmate out there for everyone. I haven't fully met mine. I think this is as close as it's going to get right now, but there are certain things where we're not at the same level, it seems. So that's what kind of worries me. But I want this to be my forever because this is the closest I've ever gotten to being as happy as I am right now. I've, I've been, I, I have gotten easily distracted before, but now that I fully have him, it's like, okay, now I don't have to be distracted. Now you can be here every day. That was the difference. He couldn't see me every day or be with me every day to where, okay, now I have all this time alone. Now, like when I need you and you can't be here, then that's a problem Now I got to go find it. So with him actually being here and he, he has been with me every day. Like he, he calls my home, his home too. And it's, it's nice. And it's, it's different. Like now I'm like, like I get to work and I'm like, all right, I'm a little too happy. I feel like something's going to fucking happen. I don't know if it's going to be me that's going to happen, but I feel like something's going to happen because I'm, I'm really happy right now. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> but right now I'm, I, I don't plan on, I'm good right now. Cause he is with me all the time, full time. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely keep us updated on, you know, what ends up happening in this new relationship that you're in. And mm -hmm. again, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right. Have yeah. a good one.
拜，拜拜。拜拜。This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. For me personally. Having a child, becoming a father, was an enormous life change for me.、Uh, it changed everything for me. Honestly, the way I navigate life, think about life, it presents a whole new set of obstacles, physically and mentally. And luckily, I feel like I've benefited so much from therapy personally that it's really helped me navigate such drastic life changes, like becoming a father. And therapy really empowers me to be the best version of myself. I feel so. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So you can honestly just keep switching until you find the therapist that you feel like is the right person for you. And you can discover your potential with BetterHelp. By visiting BetterHelp.com/opl today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com/opl. You're going to get 10% off your first month. And like I said, if you've been thinking about giving therapy a try, definitely give BetterHelp a try. And what are you waiting for? It's not always easy finding the right pair of shoes. For me personally, I know that's always the case. I end up going back and just getting the same shoe over and over again because I know I like it. But then I get tired of that. So I was on the search for something new, something comfortable, something versatile, and that is when Vessi came along. And these shoes are honestly a game changer. Vessi makes shoes that are perfect for any situation. Honestly,、uh, they're kind of like magic. Because of the features that they have, they are 100% waterproof and warm. So when it's cold, especially in New York, and there's like snow or rain or sleet, I can wear these sneakers, and they are waterproof. My sock doesn't get soaked. It's honestly amazing. And in the warm weather, like these disgustingly hot New York summer that's about to come up,、uh, they'll actually keep. You cool. So this is something I haven't experienced in a shoe before,、uh, and it's awesome. They're also super light. They're super comfortable. They slip on and off. It's quick and easy to get outside and just run out of the house. So you guys should really check this out.、Uh, odds are Vessi makes a shoe for you、uh, for any occasion. They're super versatile, like I said, which is awesome. No matter what climate you live in, wherever it is, your feet aren't going to get wet and cold again, or they're not going to get super hot. I wear these things to work out, to go to work, just go about my day, and、uh, it's perfect not having to think, you know, which shoe or having like a million shoes or. Having just the same style that I've been wearing, so super happy about Vessi. I think you guys will like it too, and you can check them out at vessi.com/opl for a pair of your own Vessi shoes. Go check out all the different styles that they have to choose from, and that is vessi.com/opl for your own Vessi shoes. And you can use the code OPL for 15% off your entire order. There's free shipping to Canada, U.S., Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore. So go check that out. It is vessi.com/opl code OPL for 15% off your entire order.、Uh, this might be the last shoe that you guys ever need, to be honest. This podcast is also sponsored by Air Doctor, and Air Doctor is an air purifier、uh, that is going to make your life so much better.、Uh, you know, Americans we spend、uh, an average of ninety percent of our time indoors, and indoor air can be two to five times more polluted than outdoor air.、Uh, in some cases, a hundred times more polluted, and we're taking twenty thousand breaths a day. So, you know. That's almost three thousand gallons of possibly polluted air that you're putting into your body. But with, with the Air Doctor,、uh, it's going to help purify the air and make sure that you're not, you know, ingesting all of these things because you know, airborne allergens are the most common things. Like that couldn't 
uh, allergy triggers uh, such as pollen, pet dander, which I have a dog. And uh, there's been a lot of s studies with uh, the air doctor where you open up the filter and there's a lot of like pet hair in it. So you could be ingesting that or it could be all over your apartment. So uh, it's just going to make your life a lot better. Uh, and, and new data from the World Health Organization shows that nine out of 10 people breathe air that exceeds the pollution limits. So we're actually breathing in a lot of, uh, you know, polluted air inside of our house. Uh, but with the air doctor, you can fix all that. Um, but yeah, it features a Whisper Jet fans that are 30% quieter than fans found in ordinary air purifiers. So it's not going to be a big, loud, like jet engine or anything in your uh, in your house or your apartment. Um, but yeah, it comes with a no questions asked guarantee, 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, so if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus the shipping. Uh, you can head to airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code OPL. And depending on the model, you'll receive up to 40% off. Uh, you are saving up to 40% off. Lock in this special offer by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use the promo code OPL. Again, that is airdoctorpro.com. Um, but yeah, you could be saving up to 40% off on, uh, on you know, depending on the model. So go, uh, go make yourself feel better, okay, with the Air Doctor. Um, again, one more time, that is airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code OPL. Well, um, I don't really know what to say. It's a, it's a different point of view. I mean, one, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. You know what it feels like? And I guess why it's so interesting is it's like, you know, that these type of people are out there, like this mentality she has, this willingness to just do whatever she wants, not care about the consequences, seek out married men, have affairs, like it exists, but it like happens in the shadows. She's just like, oh shit. <laughs> She's just like, here I am. Like this, like, I don't give a fuck. And this is my mentality. And I just, I don't know. I just, I still don't know like why she's so open about that. I don't know. And it also like, you know, I think that, I mean, 50% of marriages fail. Right. And I don't, I don't know the percentage of this, but I, I'm imagining, you know, a good percentage of that is because of cheating or, you know, whatever, or people stepping outside of their marriage. Um, but there, there like usually is some sort of like shame and like you feel bad mm -hmm. and, you know, but this just kind of felt like in a way she was just like, well, I, that's just who I am. I just feel like I'm trying to keep myself happy. And if I don't feel happy then I'm going to go make myself feel happy with someone else. Um, which is what she was like alluding to at the end of being like, yeah, I'm doing this right now, but who knows? You know, it could be someone else. We could have a kid fucking, those are like opposite sides of the spectrum, but they're yeah. both possibilities here, you know? Yeah. It's like whatever she feels in the moment. And it's, I, it's interesting just because like, I, I get the general sentiment of like, if you want something, you gotta take it, go after what you want. Usually not apply to like, you know, people like married couples and things like that. But yeah. It's like sports, but yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it's, you do have to understand that like your actions and your choices do have a, an effect on other people. And it's like, I know you kept asking it too. It's like the daughters in this situation, the, like these things can have lasting effects. Like she just changed the trajectory and like, I get it. Like the guy didn't have to do anything and all that, but it like changes the trajectory of like people's lives and these daughters and their parents who are now no longer together, whether that's for the better or not, I don't know, but you just have to be aware that like consequences exist and like that your actions like affect other people and not just you. Um, so that kind of like, Lack of awareness, I guess, is interesting. I don't know that it's a lack of awareness. I'm sure that she's aware that, or you know. Lack of caring, I guess. Yeah, it's, it just seems like, well, that's not really my issue, which I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm not the person to say whether she's right or wrong or something. Like, I know that I don't really relate to that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, the, 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 the daughters make it very tough, too. I mean. It's one thing if you meet someone who's in a, they're in a terrible marriage and then you guys kind of like hit it off and 
fall in love and whatever. But I don't know. This kind of felt like a different type of thing than that. It did, yeah. And I guess, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's just what it is. Like I, like you said, I guess that's the interesting thing about this show sometimes. Like, this is a woman who just wants to come on, who who is like, I find excitement in all of this. Like, I'd rather mm-hmm. seek out a married man. I'm okay with being the other woman. Like, I don't give a shit what anyone thinks, and I don't give a shit because it's making me happy. And this, like, here, here's my thought process behind it. And it's, you know, I don't know. I've never quite heard anything like that, but uh, no, that's, and like, that's her also, reality. Also, I don't think that, you know, I don't want anyone to um, think that, you know, obviously the, the, the man in this situation is also mm-hmm. kind of at fault here, I would say, equal fault uh, for this. I don't know how much remorse he has with this either, but... You know, it is what it is, and I'm sure, you know, the interesting thing to think about, like, you know, having this episode is that it's not like she's the only person in the world that feels this way or that is is currently doing this or whatever. Like, they're, this is a group of people, 100%, 100%. Like, there's a lot of people who feel this way, I'm sure. Um, oh, this happens all the time, without a doubt. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, but it's just, it's interesting just to, you know, I guess to hear. Um, but yeah, someone willing anyone, to be like... Hey, I know people are going to like shame me, hate me, leave comments. I don't care. Like I'm going to tell my story and I'm going to explain to you why it doesn't bother me to be that person where like my actions and my thoughts are like going to make other people so mad that that's like, she, yeah. I mean, there is awareness, like comment section is about to go crazy. I'm very interested to see what people say, but she just doesn't care. So there you have it. Uh, for anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, uh, hit us up. Email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Send us your story and we'll get back to you. Yeah, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, at oplpodcast, uh, patreon.com slash OPL show. And uh, thanks for supporting. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Yeah. See you next time.